arrows that just been made obsolete. This was the <laughs> weapon to be used. Two types of musket. Basic matchlock musket. Even so, because it's fired a piece of basic match, as you'll see. And the other one is a dog lock musket. It's a bit like a flint box, as you see. But a very early version. Now, drill and everything in those days was very, very simple and basic. Could move blocks of men around. <laughs> now, you get these lads marching onto the battlefield or firing it from the battlements. The guns weren't particularly accurate, but if you got enough of them, in one place, then it could be devastating. <laughs> now these lads marched as best they could in ranks, sometimes up to ten deep. You could go forward and backwards at a very slow rate, advancing one line at a time. One line would come in front of the other, or they could retire. You see them now. Make it ready. We'll go through this in a little bit more detail for you. But basically, they have to take a charge from either the powder flasks or the uh, powder charges. Just what they call flashing the pans off. When these guns are cleaned and put away, generally there's a little smearing of oil left in them just to uh, keep them in pristine condition that rust doesn't get into the bottom of the pan. So what we do is we put a little bit of powder down, flash the pan off, and then it's, then it's ready to use. So it's now it's called the order bit ready. See, the powder flask being used, now these carry a measured charge of powder, enough for one shot. If you imagine you're stood there on the battlefield, when you're in line, you're there, and it's bang. That's it. No second shot or anything like that. You've got to reload. So more often than not, the musketeers, a good officer would never fire more than half the, half the uh, musketeers off at once. He'd always keep some in reserve. Basically, like the artillery, I've just let them... Uh, get ready to fire and then what we'll do is we'll bring them closer to you so you can actually see what's going on and I'll commentate a little bit further with that. So those at the front there, these have a range of a couple of hundred yards so the people at the front there, uh, you might have to just dodge down a little bit at this, uh, at this range. Just wait until the last man's ready.
They were very slow, and everybody wanted to kill the gunners. The gunners were the state of the air weaponry of the state, and everybody wanted to silence the guns. So a life expectancy for these two gentlemen you see before you was approximately one hour on an English Civil War battlefield, which isn't very much. So you get in the, what we call the touch hole, ready by priming it with a, with a, a softer powder, and it's now going to buy itself a beer bag, and fill me about, but then it'll be okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not stood any near for a because the shock wave is coming down into the barrel, and you can just feel it from where I am, it's just like a oh, air waving over you. But if you stood any closer to it, it would put you backwards. This is a real gun, and um, it's quite capable of firing a half pound cannonball to a good quarter of a mile. So now he's fired, he's got to get all the debris out of the barrel, which he does with a search or a worm, it's a metal screw on the end of the rod. And uh, we pull all the debris out of the barrel with the worm. When it's clear, we then mop the barrel out to make sure there's no sparks left in the barrel, because if there are, then we'll blow our arms up when we, uh, we charge it. So once it's well wetted and the water come up through the touch hole, um, we then dry the barrel with a dry mop. We place that in, let it soak up the excess water, and then turn it about and twist it as we pull it out of the barrel. We have to do all this in the 17th century with all the chaos around them. So now we're going to load it. In the 17th century, a man would have brought a barrel of powder up and would have scooped it into the barrel with all the uh, other guns going off around them with a lot of casualties. Today, the health and safety, bless them, has dictated that we should use a plastic bag. So we're putting a plastic bag of powder down the barrel and we're going to put it into the breach. So the rubber is going to push it home and seat it in the breach. And then he's going to put some wadding in. Now the wadding was important because it allowed them to compress the powder. And the more the powder was compressed, then the greater the thrust of the bore when it was fired. So he now rams it home, and at this point we would have put the ball down. But again, how safety don't want to do that, so we're going to uh, not put the ball down. He would have put a second one down after the ball, which was mainly to keep the ball in place in case you had to pick the gun up and move it, the ball couldn't roll out the barrel. They now pinch the powder in the truck truck because it's compressed so much. It fills the lid up with climbing powder and it's ready to fire again.